Having barely survived the force known as Napoleon, the aristocracies of Europe wanted to make sure their positions of power were secure. In order to do this, they met at the 1815 Congress of Vienna. Here they sought to stabilize European boundaries while also restoring their own legitimacy as rulers. In other words, they wanted to get back to the good old days when they were the head honchos of their respective countries. Unfortunately for them, the disenfranchised of Europe weren't so keen on this idea. Ignoring this, the aristocracies went ahead with their plans. In 1815, Prussia, Russia, Austria, and Britain joined together in the Quadruple Alliance, which has come to be known as the Concert of Europe. They sought to return a stable balance of power to Europe. Again, this is not what the middle and working class people had in mind. For instance, in Spain, the common people desired a return to their constitution of 1812. Lucky for them, they were backed by some military officials who knew what they were doing, and eventually King Ferdinand VII was forced to give them their constitution. Seeing a monarchy in jeopardy, France, supported by the Concert of Europe, sent about 100,000 troops into Spain. Occurring in the early 1820s, the rebels of Spain were no match for the French force. In the end, the constitution was revoked, and the Spanish monarchy reigned supreme. Similar revolts dotted the map of Europe during the 1820s. Unfortunately for the revolutionaries, most of them failed. For example, when the Italian areas of Piedmont and Sicily fought for freedom against their Austrian rulers, they were put down. Like the Spanish rebels, they were no match for the forces of Metternich, the uber-conservative powerful ruler of the Austrian Empire. The same scene played out in Russia, as military leaders desired reform in their country. Sadly for the revolutionary-minded, they too were crushed by their czar. In France, the spirit of revolution took a different turn as Louis XVIII ruled from 1814 to 1824. Under Louis, the various social classes were given some civil rights. However, a group of extremely conservative aristocrats, known as ultras, wanted to do away with the constitutional monarchy. To them, an absolute monarchy in which a sovereign is unrestrained by a constitution or law was the only way to go. Although Louis XVIII smartly refused to give in to the ultras' wishes, his successor, Charles X, agreed with their philosophy. Under his rule, Parliament was dissolved and the civil rights of the common class were limited. Known to history as the July Ordinances, this proved to be Charles X's undoing. Not one to take their rights being trampled on lightly, the common classes of France rose up in rebellion and Charles X was ousted from power. Having barely survived the conquest of Napoleon, the aristocrats of Europe met to discuss their future plans at the 1815 Congress of Vienna. Fearing for their positions and desiring a stable balance of power, the Concert of Europe was established. Although this move may have calmed the fears of Europe's elite, it fueled the fires of revolution among the common classes. In Spain, rebels called for a return to a constitution. Although they met with some beginning success, they were unable to stand against the forces of France, which rode in to back up the Spanish king. Unfortunately for the revolutionary cause, the rebels of Italy who rose up against Metternich and his Austrian Empire met the same fate as that of their Spanish counterparts. Making matters worse for the common man of Europe, Russia's rebels also fell to their ruling czar. In France, the revolutionary spirit had a bit more staying power. Although they were threatened by ultras who wanted an absolute monarchy, the common men of France would not stay silent. They rose up against King Charles X and his July Ordinances, which stripped them of civil rights. In this rebellion, the French king was ousted from power, proving once again that the revolutionary spirit will endure.